Office too. That's where you can plug it into your apparatus, right? So you can get your vacuum. And then that way you can read the vacuum, you know, pressure there. Uh, what I like to do, and you might say, how do you get this hose onto the onto the apparatus, right? Well, it's tough. <laughs> I cut the hose and I stuck uh, you can get it at the fish store. They sell for the uh, you know, for their fish pumps. They sell this size. I only sell one size hose. It's right there. And it fits right inside that. I mean, I really had to jam it in there. And then I just got bigger plastic thingies. You can see I jammed this plastic one into this plastic one and this plastic one, into, you know, etc., etc. Now, what I like to do is I like to, I bought my own uh uh, gauge. I don't like this gauge up here because this one gives you more of a, you know, but it's off centered. And the thing about these gauges is if you use the inches of mercury, they kind of go backwards. And then you got to figure it out. Not only do you got to convert it, but first you got to figure it out because they're going backwards on stuff. In other words, when they're down here, instead of, you know, the complete vacuum should be zero, but they have it at negative 30 inches because that's how many atmosphere is 30 inches of mercury so a vac complete vacuum would be minus 30 to them but that don't make sense you know what I mean it should say zero and count down but they count up so you always have to translate I wish I could find a, a normal uh, uh, gauge you know what I mean um, but then I, I got this block right you can see that block there it basically just has a, a male, another male, and a female. I just screwed this on to the female one, right? Because it, cause it got like, see this is how, whatever, it has the screw ones. So I just, so I just screwed it onto there. And then these hoses, you know, I just kept banging on the other side. Remember I went from small to bigger to bigger to bigger? And then I just... On this side, I went from bigger to smaller to smaller, and right at the end of that latex. That way I can put the glass, the latex on the glass, so that the glass comes all the way up to this plastic hose. Otherwise, what will happen is the latex will just squeeze itself, the vacuum will squeeze it and pinch, and you'll cut off your whatever, your pump. So you want to have it so you can stick your glass in to here, and there's no, you know, all the way to the plastic. So you can't pinch that. That vacuum ain't gonna touch that plastic. And then I use these, uh, I use these uh, hose, hose clamps on the, you know, like this side here has a, a, a male end coming out. So I put the, rammed the hose on it. And I put this, uh, you know, this hose clamp on it. Now over here, you can see in the back, I actually have a, Valve, because you can use your valve a lot. See now it's off, and I just connected that up. And you can see here's another valve. It's the same exact valve. But see how it has threads on the end there? You can just screw that right into the right into the block there. You know what I mean? Now there's another thing you can do: high pressure hoses. That's what this is right here. It's PVC. Um, and those have a different size threading. Remember how I said there's two threadings here. This one going up goes to these HVAC hoses that actually go to the machine. But you also have high pressure hoses that fit onto this, okay, onto this one coming into the camera. And you know, if you're using one, then you got to, you know, you got to close the other one. You know what I mean? To, keep your vacuum. Uh, I don't know. I don't suggest using these that much. Uh, I got some of these. I don't know if you know about these. But it goes like this. You can pull down on it. And when you pull down on it, you can have something like that. And you put it right in there. Then you can let go of that. And they're stuck together. Right? And when you want to get on the part, you pull that down, and you can just pull it out. But these, I think, only work for high pressure or something. I think they're leaking on the vacuum. I don't know. Maybe, and like I said, I'm not a builder-type person, but this is what I originally had. And then I put this 
right onto here, right? It screws on. And then this, boom, put it, put it on like that, and your hose is ready to go, you know what I mean? And the other side of the hose would look like this, you know? I basically put plastic hoses to make, you know, make it smaller or bigger to what I need. And these are our PVC hoses. They're high pressure. So, like I said, I don't, I don't know what the deal was, but I would stick with these these kind of hoses, these thin ones that go with the actual machine. They work perfect, and now that I realize that you can close this cap and not have oil spill all over the place. Uh, another thing is your oil. You've got to make sure your oil is good. You've got to have, hot, I mean, a vacuum pump oil. They sell it right at the whatever, and you'll see a line here. You got to always have it filled where, you know, always check that. Cause you don't let the, you don't you don't check it one time, and it'll blow your motor. So another thing I wanted to, I guess the last thing I wanted to bring up was this. <laughs> you can't, you know, if you don't have a valve on here, you're gonna put your uh, vacuum on, and it's just gonna go all the way up to wherever it goes up to, right? But I noticed that, okay, because I was doing this video, so I got my thing pumps out and I was playing with them. This handle, this valve here, right? You can, what you can do is you can just open it part way. Like if I open it there, now it will open up to here. If I open it slightly more, it will open to here. If I open it slightly more, it will open to here. Now I've never done a distillation trying to do that. I think you'd have to keep wiggling it and adjusting it because if I set it for here, right, let's say I set it for here, so it only goes to this vacuum instead of all the way around to a complete vacuum, right, so I'm, say I'm just doing water and I, I don't want it to be that low. If I put it like this short, it'll stay like that, but once I start boiling stuff, right, the, the pot is going to have vapors coming up and it's going to change the pressure, right, so I don't know if you know, that changing the pressure, now you're going to have to change the valve here. It's just going to be a non-stop constant battle, you know, trying to adjust this. I don't know. But it's an idea. I'm going to try it sooner or later, uh, you know. Let's say you want to vacuum distill something, right? And it, under vacuum, you know, it's going to distill at uh, 70 degrees Celsius, right? So you put your... You don't turn your pump on, <clears throat> you don't get it up, let's say it's going to boil at 70 degrees, okay, with your vacuum. You want to turn your pump on well before your pot gets to 70 degrees, okay, well before that. Maybe 60 degrees Celsius, you know, your pot's at, and you know it's going to boil at 70. That's when you turn your vacuum pump on. You don't wait until it's 70, because you'll just bump everything over it, you know, out of your reaction flask into your receiving flask. You want to give it plenty of time to build up the vacuum and, and be used to it before it gets to the boiling point, okay? And when you turn it on, <clears throat> like I said, if you have a valve, you can have the valve off, you turn the pump on, and then you slowly, slowly turn it on, okay? If you don't have a valve, you turn your pump on, and you don't have this connected to your apparatus. And you stick it onto your apparatus slowly, you know what I mean? And... Uh, Remember, you don't want your liquid to be ready to boil at that point. You want it to be at least 10 degrees lower so that it has time to adjust. Now what I do is I turn my vacuum pump on. I slowly open the valve and I let my vacuum come all the way down. And then I, and this is at, say, it's going to boil at 70 degrees. This is at 60 degrees. I do this. And then a vacuum comes all the way good and then I put my valve, I close it. And I turn my pump off. And what happens is it'll stay there. And as the temperature gets higher and it starts to boil, you'll see the, uh, the thing move, you know, saying that you're losing your vacuum a little bit. At that point, I turn my pump back on and I slowly open it up again. And you know what I mean? You don't have to have it on the whole time, but you need to keep your vacuum there so that you don't uh, scare the, you know, the liquids in there you know, at, at its boiling temperature. It needs to be at the vacuum already before it starts boiling. This pump right here and these pumps from Harbor Freight, they have metal insides. So sooner or later they corrode, you know what I mean? You're sucking out 
chemicals and putting it into the pump. Uh, that's not good for it, you know what I mean? So you pump isn't going to last forever, you know what I mean? It's not gonna, 20 years, 10 years from now, you're not going to have this pump. Maybe even five years from now, it's going to be done. Uh, that's how old this other pump is I got. It's about five years old. It broke down. Um, but they do sell ones that have the plastic insides. And the nice thing about that is, is that it, it doesn't degrade from the chemicals and stuff like that. But they cost more. Instead of $150, you're going to be paying $400, maybe $500 now uh, for the same pump doing the same exact stuff. But it'll last a lot longer because it will, will, you know what I mean? But me, I think I could buy three of these pumps over the next 10, 15 years. Or I could buy a $400 pump that's going to last 10 or 15. It's going to be the same money, you know what I mean? And I don't have one. I threw mine away at broke last year, but it's a hand pump. I'm sure you can imagine it. I got a little hand pump here. It's just like a gun. But the hand pump's going to be <clears throat> almost 20 bucks or 20 bucks. And for $18, you can go down to uh, Harbor Freight and get that real cheap one. And you don't have to pump anything. It gives you, you know, not a great vacuum, but you don't have to pump it. But at least you don't have to pump it. Right? I got my little gun here, I guess. And at the gun point, there's a pipe that sticks out. And you can put a hose on it, right? Just like the fish tank. And you can use those for, uh, you know, vacuum distillation or filtration, right? But the thing is, you got to keep pumping them over and over and over. It's just a never-ending thing. The way you can stop that, I mean, you still don't have to pump it all the time, but not as often, is to get one of these. I got this at the fish tank store, and it's basically just a check valve. I wish I'd come into focus, but it says in and out. And it has a little nipple on each side so you can put a hose on it and if you put this in between your apparatus and your hand pump I guarantee you on a vacuum distillation where you're trying to pump it you will not have to pump it as often that's a fact and also when you use your for vacuum filtration if you put this in between the vacuum hand pump and the what you're filtrating it'll really help out a lot I mean it's only like a dollar or something I mean this really helps I I'm telling you, go get it if you got a hand pump. This will make the difference. I mean, it's between night and day. But those hand pumps, again, you can only get it down to like a half a vacuum. You know what I mean? Um, and then there's the, the last thing is an aspirator. Now, an aspirator, uh, I don't, you know, if you put them on your faucet, your spigot, you're just running water constantly. And if you use a pump, you're not going to get a strong enough pump. Uh, they are good, but they're not good for like, if you have something that boils real high and you want to do a vacuum distillation, it's not going to help you bring your boiling point temperature down that much. But it's kind of like in between uh, nothing and this set, this 75 micron one. You know, you're going to get maybe 300 microns, 350, you know, 400 microns, uh, which isn't that low, but uh, for vacuum filtration, it's great. So that's the thing about it. Like for vacuum filtration, uh, th these pumps are almost too powerful. When I use them, I use my my uh, valve, and I turn it on real slowly, because if I don't, man, it just sucks everything up real quick. Um, but the first thing you should do, if you're planning on doing a vacuum distillation, and you get one of these pumps, is to... Vacuum is still something that's easy. You know what I mean? If you get the 75 micron one, vacuum, vacuum distillate some water. First thing. That's the first thing I do. Even, you know, and uh, this other one that, that goes down to 22.5 microns, you can't distill anything that boils under 120 where it'll just jump, jump out, out of the flask. Um, but you can get like maybe uh, ethyl benzene or something and try to uh, vacuum distill it, you know what I mean, under this high vacuum, you know, for this pump over here that you can't see. Anyways, I hope I hit everything. If you have any questions or anything, just ask me in the comments. Um, but I hope this helped everybody. Anyways, enjoy have a great day, and always remember, science is great.